Uh, my name is Richard Finlayson. I am the managing director of the Quality Group. We run uh, quality training in Hospitality College, uh, quality catering at Adelaide Zoo, and uh, hospitality jobs. Uh, and it's my privilege uh, to be chairing this panel today. Uh, tourism jobs, unique and filling opportunities. South Australia has performed incredibly well in uh, the tourism market, outperforming the other states and territories in, in Australia, which is uh, always a wonderful thing to boast. In the last two years alone, we put on an extra 4,000 jobs in uh, the tourism industry. Uh, the panel discussion will focus on whether that's sustainable, where the jobs of the future will be, and how to get those jobs of the future. Joining me are three experts in industry. I have on my left, uh, far left, Andrew Holmes, who's the manager of the Handorf Inn. In the middle, I have Steve Callery, who's the general manager of visitor experiences for Zoos SA. And uh, on my right, or closest to me, is Paul Vickery, who is the um, general manager of Sealink. So I'd just like to start with um, Andrew and just ask Andrew what his experiences are from leaving school, where, what his journey took him in the industry, where he is now, and what kind of job opportunities uh, are in his, uh, his current business. So, Andrew, over to you. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, Andrew Holmes is my name. Uh, Managing Director, Handorf Inn, Adelaide Hills Wine Centre, and the Ackerbrow Beer Hall up in Handorf. So, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, South Australian born. Uh, I studied, uh, it's quite a long journey. I studied at Regency Park um, TAFE, did a diploma of hotel management when I was uh, 18, and um, looked for my first job in a, a hotel. It's something that I was passionate, always wanted to do ever since I grew up in Papua New Guinea, traveling, staying in nice hotels, getting room service. I wanted to be part of that, that theater. So it was a bit of a passion. So um, I was lucky enough to uh, go into um, the industry as a level of porter, and I worked for a company called Sun Pacific Hotel Group. Now, they were the largest hotel group in the southern uh, South Pacific at that stage, um, and I spent the next uh, 18 years with them, essentially working my thro way through all the departments, from in-room dining to servicing minibar to doing night porting uh, shifts, um, right up to front office, food and beverage management, and up to the, the level of um, executive assistant manager overseeing a $29 million hotel and 380 staff. So it was quite a long, committed journey. Um, I was very fortunate uh, that uh, I stuck to what I, what I planned to do. Um, and that's one thing with this industry that uh, if you're really passionate about it, you really have to work hard and, and commit yourself to to your employers and uh, show that, put your hand up when the shifts are there and really show that you're committed and passionate about the industry. At the end of the day, it's a people, people industry. So um, after that journey, um, uh, when my family sort of started to grow and uh, travel um, was not always convenient um, because in the larger hotel groups, they used to transfer you two, every two to three years, which is quite exotic going to different tropical locations and working in nice large, beautiful hotels. Um, so I decided to uh, move into small business and 11 years ago I um, took some risks and uh, invested into a hotel in the Adelaide Hills. And um, at that stage, Handorf, uh, I can say, was uh, definitely a tourist uh, attraction in itself, being so close to uh, Adelaide. Um, but it's nothing like it is today and I can really say that the last um, three to four years, uh, when I started in uh, Handorf Inn, I had 28 staff. And now I'm happy to say I've got over 80 staff, over three products uh, in Handorf, in the um, wine centre, the beer hall, and also the Handorf Inn. So we've lucky enough to expand. And the reason we did that is because we engaged in what, what we brought to our, our visitor, and that was the tourist experience. Um, and that was providing cultural food, understanding all about our product and delivering it to our visitors. Working hard with uh, organisations and commissions like SA Tourism Commission, um, travelling to China, really assisting them in product, um, uh, product uh, development of all the agents in China to bring more visitor numbers to South Australia and promoting the great things that we have here to offer. 
Um, so little, that's, uh, that's sort of um, uh, my story. Um, and still today, um, I'm an advocate for, um, for international marketing and assisting new operators and new food and beverage uh, offerings to improve products, to make South Australia more attractive, creating more work, creating more jobs, um, and the opportunities are just so diverse. It's, uh, it's been tremendous, particularly the last two years. So uh, the, it's looking good for tourism, definitely in the next 12 to 18 months. Thank you, Andrew. Steve. Thanks, Richard. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Callery from uh, Zoos SA. Um, my career started off uh, with the National Parks and Wildlife Service of South Australia um, at various locations around South Australia, um, where I, I really, at first it was in a, just a general administration role, um, and then my interest in the nature-based tourism and ecotourism developed further. So I was very fortunate, I had a number of opportunities um, to work in a number of areas of, of national parks and had some good mentors along the way as well. Um, my last role with National Parks was at Cleland Wildlife Park as, as business manager up there, up there for four years. And yeah, that was an amazing opportunity there, really broadened my knowledge even further. Uh, lots of international visitors up there, uh, product development opportunities. Um, so yeah, that, that just uh, developed my passion a little bit further for the nature-based tourism from there, I did actually take a different tangent and uh, I headed to the Barossa, working in wine tourism, just for a little bit of a change. And uh, spent a couple of years there and that gave me uh, some exposure to, yeah, quite a different area of, of tourism. And, uh, but my passion for the nature-based tourism was still there. So I was fortunate enough that my current role in, in the zoo became available and uh, I headed back to the nature-based tourism area, um, of which I've been there for almost 10 years now. The zoo has some pretty amazing opportunities. Most people um, think oh, the zoo is just about keeping, keeping staff, looking after the animals, and that's obviously uh, a big part of it. But uh, the zoo across Adelaide and Monato Zoo has about 250 employees. Of those 250, it's only about 80 employees that are actually involved in keeping staff. So the other roles uh, can be quite diverse from anything through to customer service, uh, guiding. Uh, there's, there's a huge amount of volunteering opportunities at the zoo as well. We have 500 uh, volunteers across both sites involved in about 17 different programs. Um, events, functions, hospitality. Um, there's quite a few opportunities within, within the zoo world and a range of qualifications required. If in our, as, as the expectations of a zoo visit change and we develop um, different markets, we're, we're getting more into international and interstate markets coming to the zoo rather than previously it was just a local market for us. So. Um, and people are becoming more and more expectant to be uh, entertained more. So the roles that we develop at the zoo do have an element of that now. So, for example, keeping staff would have an element of uh, being um, presenters as well. That's, that's one of the key criteria for us appointing. We actually have a whole team at Adelaide Zoo called Nature Theatre and their key role is they are keepers, but they also um, are, are very um, skilled presenters uh, about our conservation messages to the public coming through. So there is quite a broad range of opportunities within the zoo, so it's, it's broadening people's perception of what, what a zoo does and the opportunities within that space. Thank you, Steve. Paul. Good afternoon, great to be here. Uh, I'm Paul Victory and I'm uh, the general manager of a company called Sealink, a proud South Australian company that operate nationally right across the country, in Sydney Harbour, up in Queensland, in Darwin, in Perth, and uh, here in Adelaide. We go to some of the great 
islands around Australia, Rottnest Island, Kangaroo Island, Stradbroke Island, Magnetic Island, and the Tiwis up in um, the Northern Territory. Um, like the boys alongside of me, my career is uh, a long one, um, and it starts with being young and passionate about working with people. I think that's the key to our industry, whether you're in nature-based tourism or wine tourism or or uh, any part of the diverse tourism industry, it's about being able to talk to people. And um, that's the simple thing that uh, will get you started. Um, if if uh, I have young people come to me looking for jobs, if they present well and if they have a smile on their face and if they are engaging with people, then that's the key to getting a job. And uh, I would just say the tourism industry is probably, you know, to me it's, it's the best industry. We've got a great haul of jobs you can have here, but tourism will give you lifelong satisfaction. Uh, it'll give you a career. Uh, you can start, as Andrew said, cleaning rooms or in front desk roles or answering telephones, uh, and you can end up as the general manager, chief executive. And um, it's about growing your skills along the way. I was fortunate to to um, choose um, to study early and uh, continue your study all the way through to develop your skills. I remember when I first did undergraduate um, study, I worked out that, wow, I love this industry that, that I'm in, but how can I sell it more? So I went back and did marketing and business to work out, well, I need to be able to sell my product and then I did a master's to finish it off because I needed the, the leadership, I needed the ability to manage people. So um, I think that's one of the great skill, the great things about tourism. You can, you can take a great pathway. Uh, thank you, Paul. Just uh, sticking with you, Paul. Um, 15 years ago, I went to Kangaroo Island and I went again last year. And the difference uh, in 15 years uh, was um, amazing. And it, it, it's very much uh, becoming a, a more a high market tourism industry. Can you just briefly chat about Kangaroo Island itself as a destination and all the different uh, innovations that are happening there and have happened over the last couple of years? Yeah, what a beautiful spot, Kangaroo Island. Um, and you're dead right. It was uh, a very small farming community, um, you know, through the 70s and 80s, and it probably wasn't until the 80s when really um, Kangaroo Island as a tourism destination started. And Sealink who commenced operations in 1989 uh, under the current ownership structure, um, really started to um, see the business opportunity. And, and one of the things we haven't talked about is that tourism is economic development. So the more that we can bring people to an island destination, the greater the wealth of the island itself. Uh, as people, um, you know, have lunch in restaurants, visit nature-based tourism, do stuff in the parks, do stuff in great hotels. Um, that's how the tourism economy grows. And what we've seen in Kangaroo Island over the last 30 years is being that tourism economy has grown. And I'll just make one point. Um, the reason that we've, there's two reasons. One is because people like us have been knocking on doors around the world opening up new markets for South Australia. So knocking on Chinese travel companies and saying we should, we should do deals to get Chinese visitors in, we should do deals to get German and UK visitors in. Marketing is a key. The other is that product development starts with great product and experience. And um, when Southern Ocean Lodge uh, opened in around 10 years ago, um, that put Kangaroo Island in places around the world that it had never been before. It got put in that luxury discerning traveller market and when that market opens up, the luxury travel market, uh, it's actually brought new interest in Kangaroo Island and I think that's the sorts of things that have happened over the last 30 years. Uh, thank you. A question for you, uh, Andrew. You've said over the last few years you've gone from 28 staff to 80 staff. Obviously, there's a lot of people here looking to explore this industry. How do, what, what do you look for in prospective staff members, and how do you find them, or how do they find you? 
because from 28 to 80 is a massive growth and obviously you, you will continue to grow and continue to look for new staff. Yes. Um, okay, so to answer that question, I'd uh, firstly, in regards to what do we look for? Well, we don't necessarily need to come to us with um, all the tricks of the trade. We like to sort of uh, bring you in, train you through, um, find your career path, what you feel most comfortable with. If it's a wine passion, we maybe put you through uh, to our wine centre, put you through some program trainings, some um, time with some of the, um, the, uh, the winemakers that come through our centre, doing tastings, etc. Um, but I think it just comes down to attitude, um, inspiration, wanting, wanting to do the job and putting yourself before everything else to do that job. And that's the most important thing. So we look for someone that's uh, extremely um, uh, in, into people. Because at the end of the day, it's a people industry. Okay, now in regards to our employment growth, it's a bit of a fairy tale, um, but uh, it's certainly, I could say, engaging the market that was most important to us was Southeast Asia and the China market. So essentially visitor numbers into South Australia um, for those areas uh, surpassed 50,000 now. Um, SA Tourism Commission's um, 2020 plan for visitor numbers on those markets has already um, been overwhelmed. We've seen direct flight carriers like China Southern coming into South Australia with good full loads. We've got our education, our study Adelaide programs that um, basically work hand in hand with tourism. So international students, visitor numbers, visiting friends and relatives. So what we did is I simply three years ago um, employed some international student graduates. Now what happened with that is it allowed me to ta tackle new markets like China, um, digitally on platforms like WeChat, etc., expanding my business, allowing me to open two more tourism products. Now with that becomes more employment. So when I opened up my beer hall, I had another 15 to 20 regional jobs in that business. With my wine centre, I could employ another six to eight, including another manager. So, in a nutshell, um, yes, uh, engaging in experts in the field will assist you to grow income, your sales, expanding business, diversification, then which includes employing more people. So that's how we rapidly grew in three years. And we got to thank our, our, uh, our tourism um, to South Australia and the market that we did really well in to get to where we are. Thank you. Um, Steve, uh, I believe uh, it's a very timely um, panel session today because last night Adelaide Zoos won a couple of awards at the State Tourism Awards. Can you give us just a, people know the zoo have animals, uh, I, would, I would like to think they know that, but can you just tell us some of the other innovations that are happening at Adelaide Zoo and um, Monarto Zoo? Sure. Yes, we were very fortunate last night to win the um, Major Tourist Attraction Award as part of the SA Tourism Awards and also the inaugural People's Choice Award, so we were very pleased with that outcome. Um, with zoos, they are changing. It's... <laughs> People are not just looking for an experience where they come to the zoo and they, they tick off, I've seen an elephant, I've seen a giraffe. They're, they're actually, as I mentioned earlier, they're looking to be entertained more as well. And it, zoos have far more conservation focus than what they ever had as well. So it's combining those two, uh, that we're, we're getting those conservation messages across, but also in an in a educational and entertaining way for uh, visitors. So um, two years ago we released a 20 year master plan for the zoo and uh, one of the, the key projects in that is at Monato Zoo which um, we've developed a what we're calling a Lions 360 experience which is basically meaning that the, the humans are the ones that are in the cage and the lions are all around the humans. So I'm not sure if any of you have been to Monato uh, and seen the lion exhibit out there. It is a huge exhibit. Uh, you can fit the whole of Adelaide Zoo in the lion exhibit at Monato. And uh, with this experience, you basically go through a tunnel into the lion exhibit and you pop up in the lion exhibit. 
in, in basically a cage, modelled on something similar to the shark cage diving experience. But they're the sorts of, of projects that we have to be far more innovative with. Um, as I said, to get our conservation messages um, across, but also provide what that changing uh, visitor requ uh, requires to be satisfied with their experience coming to the zoo. So that's one of the key projects happening at Monato, as well as um, a, a development of a, a safari-style accommodation there. Um, Adelaide Zoo is a little bit similar. So um, uh, one of the key projects we developed, or coming up to two years ago now, was actually a nature, nature's playground. And you might think, well, what, why do you need a playground in a zoo? But the key focus of that development was, again, getting people connected back with nature. So it's returning to the roots where, you know, kids will play in the pond and they will jump on logs and uh, all of those sorts of components of, of childhood. Um, that project has been majorly successful for us. We've seen about a 30% increase in membership since the development of that. And it's obviously hitting the mark with what people are looking for as part of their uh, experiences coming to, to sites like zoos. So we've got a lot of projects uh, within that 20 year plan, So, but they're some of the, the ones that are happening right now or have most recently been completed. So we're very excited about that. Thank you, Steve. Um, Paul, uh, a question for you, which I'll expand to the panel. Uh, years ago, when my parents first came to Australia, it took them five days via a ship. Um, from March next year, you'll be able to fly direct from Perth to London non-stop. It's becoming a lot easier and a lot cheaper for people to get to Australia. Uh, what impact do you see that having on the tourism industry? And what new or different skills will we need to develop in order to hopefully um, service the, the increased demand from people from overseas? Well, <laughs> um, what we know is that more people will travel more frequently all around the world. And so, you know, the world is uh, your oyster and uh, we will all travel more. So destinations like South Australia or like Kangaroo Island or, or any part of the regions of South Australia will need to be very competitive in their tourism offer uh, and very smart about the way they market that product. So opening up the world will bring more people and, and uh, the Dreamliners and the new, new aviation routes are fundamental to just bringing people to the state. Once they're in the state, um, and t t tourism is a very competitive industry, so actually getting them to the state is a very difficult part of, of the Australian tourism mix. Um, so as people look to, uh, because we're all becoming time poor, um, we'll have you know, four weeks a year annual leave, your choice to go to Hawaii, Africa, Southeast Asia, China is, is enormous and you know, the, the aviation access provides competitive travel rates for you to go. Um, Australia needs to be very smart, very competitive, easy for uh, visitors to travel around. So we need to get our tourism products here in South Australia very connected. Uh, being able to travel between the outback and Kangaroo Island has got to be easy as possible. And the product's got to be good. So, you know, around industry development for agencies like South Australian Tourism Commission. We've got to build the skill base of people, and that's what, that's what we're talking about here. Our stand's in the middle of the hall, in case you haven't been there. Um, but being able to build uh, you know, quality experiences is about people. And I just come back to, you know, we, it's a people industry, and if we look after people, people will want to come back, and then they'll use social media to tell other people about it and hey, look at me on Instagram because I'm having a great time. Steve, same question. Yeah, look, I, I agree with Paul. It can only benefit um, us. And, and as Paul said, it is a challenge getting people to come to your state as well and then keeping them here within the state. And they do demand quality experiences when they're here. Um, 
and that's where it, it, having a skill set of, of staff and the experiences that you offer have to be right up there to, to attract that market and, and keep them here. Um, it's also a lot of collaboration between the industry as well, so it, it's not necessarily seeing everyone else as a competitor, it's actually working collaboratively with, with, you, uh, with other operators um, in, in developing skills, developing experiences and, um, and making sure we've got a top end product to keep people here in our state. Thanks Steve. Andrew? Yeah, look, definitely um, back that up. Collaboration, essential. Um, we found that uh, visitors to South Australia really love South Australia because South Australia is more um, warm and friendly and really uh, people are finding experiences meeting owners of businesses rather than going through essentially a tourist trap. So South Australia still got that, um, that romance about it. Um, we do very well with our food and wine. It's a premier um, offering that we have in South Australia. So what we found uh, in the, particularly the last two years is uh, regions are working together. So what Steve said is very correct. Um, Barossa Valley, for example, and the Adelaide Hills Wine regions are not competitors, they, they uh, work together. So if we link Adelaide Hills as a drive market through the rear um, back way through to the Barossa Valley and start collaborating with the operators, all of a sudden our products become a little bit more attractive. Um, so that's what working together is all about. And really, uh, Barossa Valley are uh, terrific and tremendous in their wine varieties, and the Adelaide Hills are very different as well in their alternate style varieties. So um, once again, Adelaide Hills linking in with um, uh, Victor Harbour in Kangaroo Island. So it's really, uh, it's really, and look, going on many tourism um, road shows, uh, the same sort of operators and regions are there and uh, I can say that we do work very well together um, and endorsing each other's uh, products. So um, uh, another uh, little thing in regards to the question, in regards to um, how can we improve understanding and sharing more about our products. Let's face it, um, there's a thing called conversational currency. Everyone's got a smartphone. Everyone shares their experiences, and really that's where um, South Australia uh, needs to engage. I would really encourage all my team and staff, if they see a, a visitor table, um, to pick the phone up and take a photo for them, because that photo could be shared amongst thousands or uh, on social media, whether it's uh, WeChat or Facebook or, or what have you. So. Um, so definitely, uh, they are ways that we can um, continue to grow as a tourism um, state. Thank you. Um, back to Paul. Um, if you uh, go on social media, watch the news or read a newspaper, there is a general fear that uh, robots and technology will take over all our jobs. Where do you see that impacting um, the tourism industry in general with the new technologies, be that robots, I know there's robots on some of the cruise ships these days, uh, whether that's a real threat or it's more gimmicky or it will add or take away jobs? I'm very proud to say that tourism needs people. So uh, no robots in the tourism industry. However, in saying that, uh, we are planning for um, some of the roles in our company that's available uh, will, be, will be influenced by, by technology and um, probably those like uh, ferry drivers is one at risk where the technology uh, around GPS, around um, information systems allows vessels to get from point A to point B without human influence and uh, that will probably be a good thing uh, for those of you who know your maritime industry. Uh, if a boat crashes, it's not a good thing. Um, so with, you know, the current technology, I think the, the skippers and vessel masters is one and probably that goes for coach drivers as well. Just in terms of the collaboration, uh, many people might not know that Sealink are uh, probably one of the largest 
uh, tourism operators to take people to the Adelaide Hills or to Cleveland Wildlife Park or to the Adelaide Zoo. Uh, we actually provide tourism opportunities for 25,000 people here in and around Adelaide up to the Barossa. Um, but I, th I think probably, you know, coach drivers, but the people interaction, the thank you ma'am, the uh, person who's going to um, uh, look after the hotel room, I think most of that is, is uh, I think tourism is still a very, very um, people oriented business. All of our sales roles, IT is a huge growth area for, for our business. Uh, we currently employ probably about 25 people directly related to reservation systems, um, our back of house activities around cash management and all those sorts of things. So um, I really do believe that, you know, 90% or more of the tourism industry is safe. Uh, look, there is a place for it, and um, there's there's no stopping the development of of that. But uh, like Paul, I agree, it's it is very much the human face as well that is required. Um, if you look at industries such as uh, what I work in with the um, nature-based tourism, there's there's areas that um, we actually consider now what what the future is and how how some of that technology will improve the experience of our visitors and it could even be that uh, you know certain animals that we may have had on exhibit are not actually there you're, you're actually having a an experience at the zoo that is completely involving technology that is immersing yourself into that nature-based world um, getting our key messages across providing a fantastic experience um, but you're actually not encountering a real animal so we are actually looking at those sorts of things um, at the moment but I would hate to see that uh, be completely taken over I couldn't see it being completely taken over but there is a place for it absolutely. Andrew? Uh, yeah well look, in, my, uh, in my world robots don't exist. <laughs> um, Unless uh, some staff turn up in the morning a little bit hungover, maybe a little bit robotic. Um, but look, uh, it's, I, I can see uh, our business growing. The more products we open up, the more attractions we open up, the more people we need. At the end of the day, the hospitality industry is a people industry, and we've got to keep it that way. So the, the moment we take that out and the humane part of our industry, it's, uh, it essentially becomes robotic, and that's not going to happen. So the tourism industry is so diverse, um, and you know I was talking to a young man, John, young man in the earlier at my booth. Um, this young man wants to take a career path in uh, chefing. Now, I, I feel that this industry, our chefs, are probably the area I believe that's got the most opportunity for success and growth, because it's a career path that can essentially, uh, after your apprenticeship, can, it, can set you up in a, in a large organisation, someone that's passionate about their food. At the end of the day, we've all got to eat, correct? And we all don't want microwave. We want a chef there cooking for us. Okay, so opportunities to work in large hotel groups. Further to that, also branching into your own business. And we've seen a lot of, in Adelaide is a great example, and great, some great examples of some switched on young operators opening up little, um, little uh, bars and restaurants like uh, in Lee Street, Peel Street, that are just creaming it, doing a tremendous job. And all they're doing is they're being um, modern, fresh, using local products, which we've got on our doorstep, and South Australian liquors, wines, etc. Okay, and combining them all for the visitor experience. Now, this is all a people. Uh, this is all a people um, doing essentially. So, you've got to create a menu. You need a brain to create a menu. You've got to uh, have a hand to cut with your knife skills. You need to design. You need to cook. So, this is all methods that come from people. And I know that sounds obvious, but however, um, and sadly. Uh, we don't see enough good young chefs coming through the ranks. Um, and if I was to go back in time, I think I would have taken that career path. 
And now I've sort of stuck with cooking for the kids on a Sunday afternoon now, but uh, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, so look, uh, I, I don't see there's any threat. I feel our industry um, is definitely always going to be a people industry. Um, yes, so thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I'll, shortly I'll open up to the floor for questions. Um, you mentioned, uh, I think, what, what we would describe as a skills gap, and I, obviously in my industry, I speak to lots of um, employers, and there's, there seems to be a massive disconnect. There, there seems to be a lot of employers who are struggling to find staff, and a lot of uh, people who are struggling to find work. Um, how people out there are, are obviously interested in a career in uh, tourism and hospitality. How can we bridge that gap? What would your advice, uh, and I'll go through the panel as, as probably their, their final um, statements before we open it up, but what advice would you give to the people looking and what is your sales pitch for the, uh, the tourism industry? Because um, the, the news is, is positive, but we need people to take, the, take up the position. So I'll start with um, Paul then Steve and finish with Andrew, just a bit of a, a, a sales pitch and how we can probably bridge that skills, skills gap that exists currently and will probably get worse in the future. Paul. Yeah, I, I'd encourage people through the TAFE and university sector. I think that's a um, found, great foundation for uh, a career. Um, if you don't want to go that way, then um, practical experience is the key. Uh, grab a job work in a restaurant, work in hospitality, and uh, you can build your career, uh, you know, very quickly. Um, I don't think it's a tricky, I think, I, I don't think it's a hard industry to, to get a start in. If, um, if you want to be in tourism, walk in somebody's front door. Uh, I'll just tell a quick experience. I was uh, 20 years old uh, when I first started in the industry and I um, was living in London, working in the Ashes Hotel in London and I walked past a travel shop and I saw a brochure from an Australian travel company called Contiki and I picked up the brochure, went back to my room, rung Contiki and they said, oh, we're actually looking for somebody at the moment. Uh, why don't you come in? So it can happen. I mean, I, the other thing that I would say is that we're always employing so um, as a company, we're always employing people from grassroots up. So grab hold of a brochure, make a phone call, and get a start. Thanks. Um, agree that practical experience is, is key. Um, take whatever opportunities you can to. Again, just specific to my area, volunteering is a big one as well. Um, We've got over 500 volunteers, but people take those opportunities as they come. So it doesn't necessarily end up getting them all a job, but it gives them some, some of that practical experience. Another key is passion. You've got to have passion about it. The tourism industry is hard work, and it's 24-7, and uh, so you've got to have that passion for it as well to, um, to commit to it. It's, it's not all just whining and dining. It's, there's, a, there's a lot of hard work involved with it as well. So passion is a big key to that as well. But um, yep, definitely go through the TAFEs or the, the universities, but get that practical experience uh, as you can and have that passion for it. Yep, um, training. Lots of, um, lots of short courses that you can sort of sink your teeth into. Uh, there's also um, uh, traineeships in, in work. We offer uh, traineeships for um, job starters that want to get st happy to go through the motions. Um, the normally full-time roles as well, which is which is a great opportunity. Um, and one thing too, email is quite impersonable. Um, we've recruited a lot of uh, a lot of people that have come in with resumes and given them a go based on their presentation, their grooming, very important. Um, and their persona, and their the desire to want to work essentially, because it's a it's an industry that's um, uh, very hard working industry. However, but most rewarding, and very easy to move up the food chain, and diversify and become successful um, if you are committed to do that. So, um, it's the only industry I know. So I'm certainly going to sit here in front of you all and say, look, choose tourism. However, certainly in the last two to three years, I've seen um, South Australia really moving forward 
And uh, I really believe, and you guys have probably seen it as well, um, 18's looking very strong um, uh, in the future, particularly um, the amount of events that we're doing. Next year, we've got the Australian, uh, in this venue, we're hosting the Australian Tourism Exchange, which I don't believe it's been here for eight years or something like that, and where there's going to be some 3,000 international buyers coming to, Sad to South Australia, to Adelaide. Um, what a tremendous opportunity to showcase our city and our state and our regions. Um, so with that spin-off, ATE, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, buyers um, are going to be going away and selling South Australia, which will mean jobs. So if you're looking to get into the industry now, it would be a good start to get started, like maybe January, February. As I'd say, towards this time next year, it'll be uh, booming. Uh, one other great advantage of the tourism industry is the ability to travel. Um, and Australians are sought uh, after all over the world. There used to be a saying that when uh, England played Australia at cricket in London, you couldn't get a beer because all the barmen were at watching the cricket because uh, lots of Australian barmen still work in London. Um, so it is a, a dynamic industry that does offer lots of opportunities. What I'll do now is I'll open up to the floor. I think there's a roving mic for uh, any questions you might have. If you have a specific question to a panel member, just say, direct your question to Andrew, Steve in the middle, or Paul. Or if it's just a general question, just ask the panel, and the panel can um, then answer those questions as a, as a panel. So I know in a crowd people are always shy, but hopefully we can, it's a bit like an auction, you know, someone has to start and then it gets going, great guns. So uh, you have three tourism experts in three very different businesses. Uh, now's your opportunity to ask them any questions you might have, maybe even about how you might apply to work with, with them because um, they're passionate about what they do and they have job opportunities now and in the future. Hi, my question is to Andrew. Can you hear me okay? Um, you've already expanded uh, from the hotel to two other destinations that you've created. Do you have plans to create any more in or around Harndorf or anywhere in the region? Yes, um, we've got, uh, we've currently got two projects um, and a third on its way. So we've got some um, property uh, next to Harndorf Inn. Our plan is to open South Australia's largest Bavarian beer garden. It's because of stunning weather. So what a good idea. Um, so look, just another offering and something a little bit different. Um, uh, we also, um, our products, we use uh, passionately. We're also looking to distribute our products internationally. We've, uh, we've been asked for um, some export from some of our small goods, our pork products, proteins, sauerkraut, and our pretzels. So we currently sell our pretzels to quite a few states, and our beer, we have uh, distributing rights for our beer throughout uh, Australia and New Zealand. So it's another wing of our, our group, once again, we're hoteliers, we're publicans, we're tourism experts, but we diversify. We don't keep all our eggs in one basket. You know, we, uh, we're essentially creating different interesting things. I'll give you a quick example. We created a product called a strudel box experience. Okay, so what we heard is that we wanted, the market wanted some hands-on experience, tourism experience, that's not gonna go too long, um, using local products, so what we did is we created a strudel box ex experience. So the, the visitor can go up there, they get a box, and it's got the ingredients in it, very simply. The pastry, a group of 20 will book in. They'll construct a strudel under the guidance of one of our German chefs. We take that strudel away, we pop it in the oven while they have their lunch, and then we reserve it to them as a dessert. Uh, $25 on top of their lunch. So they're getting education on the local Adelaide Hills fruit, nuts, products. They're doing something, they're learning how to make a strudel, and then they're eating it. 
and they take photos of it because some of them look quite terrible, you might, might say. Some look quite good. But we give them back the one that they made. That's right. We, uh, they, they get forced to eat it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, and they take photos of that. And then we give them a little postcard. And then we, they fill their postcard out. I made a strudel in Handorf. And then we send it back to wherever they're from. So it's a, it's, it's a, whole, it's a whole circle there, blinking it up. And it's, it's, it's something to talk about. Did I answer your question? Good. Okay. Any other questions? Don't be shy. Thanks, everyone, for um, your time today. I just wanted to add that um, Paul and Andrew, you've mentioned that going back to say for university to increase your skills. Do you think the time when you could do something like volunteering, um, as you mentioned, Steve, for the zoos, do you think doing that and working your way up, as you did, Andrew, do you think those days are gone and people are relying on certificates for baristas and you know, everything from making coffee to, to management? Or do you think that including in your businesses and in the tourism industry, there is the opportunity for working your way up through that industry? Um, I, I'm sure you could answer this one quite well with your volunteers. I'll, I'll just quickly say um, that most definitely, um, if you show the commitment and, the, and the, the ability you're wanting to learn, okay, and you have a, an employer that appreciates that and sees that, definitely you will, you will be showcased through different skill sets on the job. So we do, a, we do, a trainee, we do traineeships where we send them also out to do um, uh, training through organisations. Um, but a lot of it's on the job training. So what they're learning at school, they will bring back to practice. Okay, and then I've, give, I've got examples of I've had green trainees or staff that essentially just started with as a trainee, as a, they, uh, as a junior employee moving into a traineeship, and at the age of 19, a uh, duty manager. So on a, on a quite a good salary, full-time salary. Now, they're at a level where in my organisation, they've got the ability to then either leave, leave the nest and move to another um, employer, which is t totally fine which is good because we like to see people grow and develop. But yes, only recently we've had those examples. We like to grow our own, we like to grow our own, um, essentially. Did you want to know about the volunteering? That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no worries. No, well, as I said, we've got uh, about 500 volunteers uh, across both sites at the zoo. And uh, a lot of, uh, although we make that very clear at the start of their volunteering experience that this is not a guaranteed job opportunity for you, but it's certainly an opportunity a lot of people do take, A, to get exposure to uh, an area that they either think they're interested in or absolutely know they're interested in. And uh, it, it gives them some great exposure to some more elements that they would get if they weren't doing the volunteering but it also gives them that opportunity to say, no, this is not for me. Or there may be opportunities uh, come up while they're doing their volunteering experience that whether it's keeping or uh, front of house person, customer service, tight role, retail, whatever it may be, there's opportunities that can potentially get them in the door uh, for that. And as I mentioned earlier, it's the passion too. So if, if you're volunteering and you've got the passion and take advantage of different opportunities that come along, then um, it certainly assists. We just appointed a general manager of uh, part of our business with no qualifications. Um, practical experience was his key. So, you know, um, when I look around the young people, I would say head for a uh, formal training program for mature people, definitely uh, have a crack and knock on the door because um, in our industry we need all sorts of people uh, from, as I said, telephones through to sales, through to operational um, people and, and management people. And, and uh, there is 
simple pathways in between that sort of parts of the organisation. But from a young people perspective, I think head for the head for the formal training. And just while it's topical, a, quick, a little plug: we have a stand in the middle um, of the auditorium. We run a web based uh, jobs board which is totally free um, and has most of the major jobs in hospitality in Adelaide and we also have a lot of free training courses this time of year to time in nicely with the Christmas rush. Um, so Simon I think is over there somewhere if you want to have a chat with him he can sort you out with hopefully a free course or, or a position because there are quite a lot of positions available currently. I think we've probably got time for one more question, yes? Anyone to be lucky last? Another question? Yeah. This time my question is about C-Link. Uh, similar to my question about the Handorf Inn, uh, what if any expansion to the operations that you currently provide uh, does C-Link have over the next few years? Very good, thank you for asking. Um, we just finished a business plan on a new luxury Murray River cruise, a uh, $15 million vessel, 22 private rooms. And if you think about what's going on in Europe at the moment with that sort of European river cruising, looking at that for the Murray River, Kangaroo Island still is very, uh, what I would say, under, underdeveloped. Uh, so we're looking at, um, again, for more, what I'd say, the discerning traveller, um, sort of quality cabins, quality accommodation in unique locations. Uh, Kangaroo Island has that amazing landscape and trying to maximise the opportunity around landscapes on Kangaroo Island. Around the country, um, we're very excited about Australia as a destination as well. I'm working on an amazing project in North Queensland at the moment called the Museum of Underwater Art, where I... Uh, an international global artist is um, looking to install a museum on the Great Barrier Reef, uh, which will again uh, diversify the product and provide uh, what will be a stunning new tourism experience on the Great Barrier Reef. The Rotne Rotnest Island, we've just launched in Rotnest Island, um, so there's some really exciting things there in Rotnest. Uh, we're working with DUNA, Department of Environment here in uh, South Australia, on um, on uh, a whole bunch of new nature-based tourism opportunities as well. So there's still lots and lots of scope, I would say. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. Um, and uh, as you can hear, there are lots of wonderful opportunities in the tourism industry in South Australia now and, and even better in the future. Uh, I'd like you just to join me in thanking our three panel members for giving up the Saturday. Andrew Holmes from the Handorf Inn. <laughs> Steve Callery from Zoos SA and Paul Victory, the General Manager of Sealing. And thank you all for listening. <laughs>